The Minnesota Timberwolves might just be your new NBA championship favorites. And if you watch the defensive onslaught against the Denver Nuggets in game two, that might be an understatement. I think that the Denver Nuggets are on the verge of getting swept. I, I never thought of my wildest dreams no. that I'd be able to say that. I think the Denver Nuggets are on the verge of getting swept. And I believe that the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to win the world championship. After decades of misery, as Wolves fans, those are words I didn't think I'd ever be uttering. But what came clear as day after the Wolves game 2 domination is that this is the best roster they've ever put together and it's not really even close. Causing an organization to self-implode into complete mania over their future, causing one of the best playoff performers in the world to throw a 48-minute adult temper tantrum, and shutting down who might be the best offensive player of all time, the world has caught notice that living up to their name, these guys are a pack of wolves swarming the ball while moving on a string as the most cohesive unit in basketball, while Michael Jordan himself apparently came back to help them take their first trip to the finals. The world has taken note as of late on how dangerous the Minnesota Timberwolves really are. As a small market team that seemed to never have a chance against the big dogs, this sure as hell seems like one incredible story no matter how it finishes. But what the world never seemed to notice is how the Minnesota Timberwolves silently created the NBA's kryptonite in front of our very eyes. The Timberwolves have historically been one of the sorriest teams in sports, as a team that really had one all-time great to carry their entire franchise's history, who they couldn't even put a lick of talent around. Ever since KG led the Wolves to the 2004 Western Conference Finals, this team's been absolutely dog shit, winning 44 games the following season and then failing to go over 500 for the next 12 years. Outside of the 2018 playoff run with Jimmy Buckets before he gave the entire team the belt to ass in practice, the Wolves hadn't made a single playoff appearance from 2004 to 2022, in a league that literally has more teams in the playoffs than out. The amount of dog shit moves this franchise has made to keep them in the slums of the NBA is honestly kind of impressive, and kind of makes you wonder how in the state of hockey the Wolves don't play in Las Vegas or something by now. From a salary cap violation that cost the team five straight first rounders, drafting Johnny Flynn and Ricky Rubio over Steph Curry in 2009, trading the draft rights for Ray Allen for the clinically insane Stephon on Marbury, and a fat list of draft busts like Corey Brewer, Wesley Johnson, Chris Dunn, Sorta, Jarrett Culver, Derek Williams, and many more. Really, I'm just surprised they didn't blow the 2015 draft by picking Jalil Okafor over Carl Anthony Towns. And ever since finding their franchise star in 2015, the Wolves have been shooting their shot in the Western Conference as a team that seems like quite a long shot from the top. While once known as the top young core in the league with Towns, Wiggins, and Levine, the plateau of Wiggins, mixed with the lack of fit with Levine as a scoring threat, forced him into a makeshift playmaking role and caused the Wolves to pull some strings that in retrospect just set them back further. Although many people did and still poke fun at the Rudy Gobert acquisition, moving Zach Levine, Chris Dunn, and Laurie Markkinen for a year and a half rental of Jimmy Butler in a year that they weren't competing may have been good to finally dip their toes in a playoff series, but it's hard to call this trade more than flipping gold for silver. In a flop of a trade that slowed their development for years, the Wolves really struggled to find any sort of identity despite talent that was once the most valuable young piece in the NBA entering his prime. Developing homegrown talent didn't really work, trading for a star didn't really work, and trading for your star's best friend just resulted in a 19-win season with one of the best centers in the NBA wasting away his talents on a dead-end franchise. The results of their misery, however, is what keeps the NBA so damn exciting. Landing the first overall pick in a draft that was considered to be all-out weak. The 2020 Zoom draft did at the time seem to be a bit weaker than other drafts and highly controversial to say the least up top. With guys like Lamelo Ball and James Wiseman having out of the ordinary paths to the NBA and falling into some interesting spots. Despite being the consensus top pick in the draft, Anthony Edwards failed to reach the hype and publicity of the players to follow. As the Warriors finding their center of the future before a big championship run and Lamelo Ball finally entering the league and dominating it as a rookie took the mainstream headlines in his first year and prior to his rookie season. More so than the all-around athlete who still had a lot to improve on in a city known for a completely different sport. Despite the lack of media coverage, the 2020 draft started the violent upswing 
have what looks like a pretty terrifying future. The addition of Anthony Edwards and acquisition of the Lakers 28th overall pick who was then traded to the Thunder and then traded to the Wolves in one damn night may have seemed like an unassuming move, but the pickup of Jaden McDaniels was the first supporting piece of the defensive superpower that we've come to know. There may not have been many awards to go around, but by 2022, after gradual improvements from Edwards as well as guys like Vanderbilt and Jaden McDaniels, as well as the sneaky 8-point contribution of the undrafted 22-year-old Nas Reed, the Timberwolves silently had their best team in the last 18 years. But the 2022 offseason was where this team would be transcended into brand new levels. But none of us knew that at the time. The NBA never fails to amaze with eye-catching talent and memorable storylines and characters that keep us glued to the TV or the social media time feed. But the hidden geniuses behind the scenes are the ones who build these into reality. And although you probably don't know his name, Tim Connolly might be the smartest guy in basketball. The mastermind behind the Denver Nuggets organization who is responsible for the second round drafting of Nikola Jokic, the hiring of coach Mike Malone, the drafting of Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., and the trade acquisition of their glue guy and Aaron Gordon. All during his tenure in Denver, had packed his bags before seeing the fruits of his labor for their 2023 championship. But let's just say that he must have seen something that the rest of the world was missing. After joining the Timberwolves in May of 2022, Connolly saw the foundation poured and was ready to start building. And let's just say, he made his presence known in one way or another, for making what many people were calling the worst trade in NBA history. Rudy Gobert to the Wolves at the time did truly look like a sorry franchise that was getting a little too good and needed to drop a turd on their future once again, giving up numerous valuable pieces like Jared Vanderbilt, Patrick Beverly, the draft rights to Walker Kessler and Malik Beasley, as well as four future first, destroying their exit route as well. If this thing doesn't work for an overpaid 31 year old center, all while having a better younger center on the roster that you now have to play out of position. It's safe to say that this trade was looked like as an absolute disaster from the jump and I was definitely one of those guys there to hate on it. But what we didn't see was the bigger picture in the mind of the guys pulling all the strings. With a defensive core already growing in Anthony Edwards and Jaden McDaniels, the acquisition of Rudy not only adds a very good defender to that system, but instills that defensive culture into your team, making the statement that this isn't going to be a score off, all while ridding themselves of a guy like Malik Beasley who although brought big time 3 point shooting, acted as more of a hindrance to winning culture due to what he was up to off the floor. While the NBA and the Timberwolves fanbase themselves were dogpiling at the moves, Connolly sat back quietly to put the final pieces of the puzzle together. In a move that likely brought a little less talent to the team, Connolly ridded the Timberwolves of the sore thumb in their system that was D'Angelo Russell for the veteran leadership of Mike Connolly and the untapped potential of Nikhil Alexander-Walker. As the Timberwolves had just put together one of the deepest rosters in the NBA with Mike Connolly, Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels, Cat, Rudy Gobert, backed up by Alexander-Walker, Kyle Anderson, and Nas Reed with shooters like Troy Brown and even deep bench depth with McLaughlin and Luke Garza, the league really didn't even know what they were looking at. With a big injury to Towns and the developing talents of their not yet superstar forming, a 42 win season was a calm before the storm. The Timberwolves coming out and grabbing the one seed for the majority of the 2024 season was a surprise to all but a few, but was anything but an accident. With the man running the show in Anthony Edwards really growing into his own at just 22 years old, the acceptance of being a star in that number two spot from Carl Anthony Towns, the rock solid leadership that's going to be there night in and night out in Mike Conley, and even the sixth man of the year out of nowhere in Nas Reed being the sneakiest pig point guard in the world. This team went from what the world saw as a misstep to having all the makings of a championship team in just a couple years. With a solid offensive system in place and the big time talent that seems to grow with the moment in Anthony Edwards, the 16th best offense in the NBA is more than enough for the best defensive system I've seen in 20 years. With a flurry of long athletic and switchy wing defenders, an absolute ball hawk in Anthony Edwards, a brilliant defensive system by the real coach of the year that the entire team has bought into, all before having the ultimate bailout button in Rudy Gobert, it should be no surprise that they're able to bully teams like the they are. The Gobert Jazz, similar to the Dwight Magic before them, were able to bail out a bad perimeter defense by forcing shots at the rim against an all-time rim protector. Now put an army of long athletes to communicate like a team, rotate to contest shots on a dime, pick their victim to attack with doubles like a real pack of wolves while having two bigs to bail them out at the rim. The brilliance of this collective talent before our very eyes goes to show that even small market teams can outwit some bigger pockets. And in a league that lacks defense, a few long athletic role players just shout out someone who might be the best offensive player in NBA history. 
The Wolves' rebuild may not have been ordinary, and it may have taken a few more years than we would have liked, but with the sky-high potential of Anthony Edwards for many years to come, a clear us-before-I mentality, and the risk of playing the way others won't, the Timberwolves might have quietly put together one of the best teams in basketball.